prospects for a series of electoral pacts between the DUP and the UP now look increasingly unlikely, unionist sources have said. In a surprising development, little or no agreement emerged over key constituencies at yesterday's meeting between DUP leader Arlene Foster and new Ulster unionist leader Robin Swan. The DUP now seems set to contest South Belfast and South Antrim with the Ulster unionists standing candidates in East Belfast and Upper Ben, sources said. The lack of progress will bolster the chances of the Spolds Alasdair MacDonald holding on to his South Belfast seat. South Antrim Dup Mla Paul Gervin is tipped to run against UP MP Danny Keenahan, although the name of Mr. Gervin's assembly colleague, Pam Cameron, is also being floated. The UP has been considering parachuting its former Nuri and Armagh Mla. Danny Kennedy, into contest upper ban. However, the DUP is intent on running sitting MP, David Simpson, and is confident he can hold his seat. In the 2015 Westminster election, the two unionist parties reached a deal in four constituencies. The DUP pulled out of Fermanagh and South Tyrone and Newry and Armagh and the UP stepped aside in East and North Belfast. However, unless further progress is made, there will only be two constituencies this time, Fermanagh and South Tyrone and North Belfast, where there is a unionist unity candidate. The meeting between Mrs. Foster and Mr. Swan lasted less than an hour. Afterwards, the DUP leader tweeted, met up leader Robin Swan earlier. We recognized the value of each other's unilateral decisions in Fermanagh and South Tyrone and North Belfast. Mr. Swan made no statement after the meeting. When contacted last night, spokesmen for neither party would be drawn on yesterday's discussions. Writing in Monday's Belfast Telegraph, Mrs. Foster had said that as the largest party in South Belfast, the DUP was intent on contesting the constituency. Ulster Unionist sources had said that former party leader, Mike Nesbitt, was considering running for the seat. However, it is most unlikely that the DUP will pull out for any UP candidate, sources said. Possible DUP candidates for the Westminster race in South Belfast include Assemblyman Christopher Stalford and former MLA Emma Little Pengley, who narrowly failed to get elected to Stormont last month, who lost her Lagan Valley seat in the Assembly election, is another possible contender for the party nomination. In East Belfast, the DUP seems confident in running its sitting MP, Gavin Robinson, without a pact. It is understood that the party believes that the pact did not substantially benefit Mr. Robinson in 2015 as many UP supporters didn't follow the party's advice and voted for Alliance's Naomi Long. The pact also helped Alliance by creating the image of male unionist candidates ganging up on Mrs. Long, sources claimed. Ahead of yesterday's meeting between the two unionist leaders, Mr. Swan was highly critical of Mrs. Foster's declaration that only the DUP could win South Belfast. It strikes me as a bit arrogant, he told BBC Radio Ulster. I had hoped to go into discussions as Ulster unionist leader with some sort of hope for unionism, for some sort of hope of coming to an agreement. I am still looking to have the conversation, still happy to go to the meeting, because unionism suffered at the March election, and I was hoping there could have been a way forward, and I am still hoping there is. 
He added that while he was still willing to talk, Mrs. Foster's attitude was not helpful at this minute in time. Meanwhile, SDLP leader Colum Eastwood said he remained open to discussing ways to company operate with other pro-Remain parties to ensure the defeat of Brexit candidates. He insisted it was not about unionism versus nationalism. I am not interested in that. That's not what I am talking about, he said. I am talking about people here sending a message not only to Theresa May but to politicians at the heart of Europe that Northern Ireland is for Europe. Northern Ireland is for Remain. Northern Ireland is against a hard border on this island and against a hard Tory, hard Brexit outcome. Asked whether he envisaged parties standing aside to let others have a free run or the selection of non-aligned independent candidates that pro-Remain parties could all support. He suggested either were possible. I don't think there is one easy fit for every single consistency, he said, adding that creative solutions were needed.